Hi, my name is Ed Rudiger and I'm pastor of Sligo Presbyterian Church. Now, Sligo Presbyterian Church is a, is a small church in a small town, Sligo, Pennsylvania. It's in the northwest corner of the Commonwealth, about 10 miles south of Clarion. And I'm delighted you're tuning in to hear another one of my devotions. Now, this one is based on a passage from Paul's letter to the Romans, the 8th chapter, beginning with the 12th verse. My dear friends, we must not live to satisfy our desires. If you do, you will die. But you will live if, by the help of God's Spirit, you say no to your desires. Only those who are led by God's Spirit are, are His children. God's Spirit doesn't make us slaves who are afraid of Him. Instead, we become His children and call on uh, Him and call Him our Father. God's Spirit makes us sure that we are His children. His Spirit lets us know that together with Christ, we will be given what God has promised. He will, we will also share in the glory of Christ because we have suffered with Him. I am sure that what we are suffering now cannot compare to the glory that will be shown to us. In fact, all creation is eagerly waiting for God to show who His children are. Meanwhile, creation is confused. But not because it wants to be confused. God made it this way in the hope that creation would be set free from decay and would share in the glorious freedom of his children. We know that all creation is still groaning and is in pain like a woman about to give birth. The Spirit makes us sure about what we will be in the future. But now we are groaning silently while we wait for God to show us that we are his children. This means that our bodies will be set free. And this hope is what saves us. But if we already have what we hope for, there's no need to keep on hoping. However, we hope for something we have not yet seen and we wait patiently for it. In certain ways we are weak, but the Spirit is here to help us. For example, when we don't know what to pray for, the Spirit prays for us in ways that cannot be put into words. All our thoughts are known to God. He can understand what is in the mind of the Spirit as the Spirit prays for God's people. And here's a devotion that I entitled, Let it be, dear Lord, let it be. I am weak, but thou art strong. Jesus, keep me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long as I walk. Let me walk close to thee. Through this world of toils and snares, if I falter, Lord, who cares? Who with me my burden shares? None but thee, dear Lord, none but thee. Of course, if you've been around the church for as long as I have, you probably know this song. In fact, it may be one of those songs you remember from childhood. You know, the, the kind that brings back memories of a, of a simpler time. But I think we'd be making a big mistake to miss, dismiss it as just, as just a, a gentle blast from the past. Because the words are anything but sweet and passive. In fact, just like Paul expressed to the Romans, it's a reminder that God will see us through the problems and pain that we face by reminding us of a status that we now have with Him and by giving us a glimpse into our own future, right here and now in the present. You see, through God's Spirit, we are God's children. And we can endure until in His good time we find eternal peace on the other side. Now, this was certainly what Paul wrote in the passage we just read. And not only is it implied in the first two verses of the hymn about which we've been talking, it's also made explicit in the last verse. And this time, I'll include the refrain. When my feeble life is o'er, time for me will be no more. Guide me gently, safely o'er, to thy kingdom shore, to thy shore. Just a closer walk with thee, grant it Jesus is my plea. Daily walking close to thee, let it be Lord, let it be dear Lord, let it be. Amen. Well, thanks for listening. I hope you found the, uh, the devotion meaningful. 
Now, if you're ever around Sligo, Pennsylvania, like I said, 10 miles south of Clarion, right off of Interstate 80, if you're around Sligo on a Sunday morning, 10 o'clock, come and worship with us. I think you'll, you'll find it meaningful. Of course, if you're around here on Wednesday morning, about 1030, come on by. We have a Bible study at the church. So join us. And so until I talk with you again, I want you to remember that you, my friend, you are a child of God. And God loves you very much. Goodbye for now.